All right, guys, we are back. Um, so I think what I'll do for this video is uh, go through a couple more um, functions that we want to add to our transfer function list. Um, for one, um, you may realize if you're going to be training these neural networks with uh, arbitrary outputs that it's sort of limited to have this sigma transfer function as the very last um, transfer function on the output layer, uh, mostly because the range of the function is 0 to 1 inclusive. You can't even get a 0 or a 1. Um, uh, I'm sorry, exclusive. Um, and um, it could be that your data is negative. What you would like to see is a negative output. It could be that what you like to see is something like 2 or 3. Um, and so this presents a problem when you're trying to train the networks because what do you do? Do you look at your entire set of training data and then say, okay, this I'm just going to scale this down to fit in the range 0 to 1? Well, that's not so good because that's, uh, that's just one more step you need to do. Um, so it would be really nice if we had a function here on the output layer that would actually uh, not be bounded in range. Um, so what I'd like to do first uh, let's go back to our neural network and go back to our transfer functions. Let's go ahead and add a linear transfer function. Okay, And this is just going to be um, whatever, sigma of x equals x. And um, this, what we can do is, if you have a network that you think is robust enough, let's say it has enough layers that you think that should be able to solve the problem, but what you'd like really is for the output to be larger um, or not bounded between 0 and 1, um, a good option perhaps would be just to add another layer uh, right here that would be uh, linear and we could let the network just train on unscaled data and it should be able to just figure it out. So that way we let the network and the algorithm do it for us uh, without having to do it ourselves. So let's go ahead and add a linear, a pair of linear functions to our uh, transfer functions class. So private static double linear of the double x. We're just going to return x, as you'd expect. And even easier, uh, private static double linear derivative of double x is going to return one. Okay, All right. Derivative of that is just one, all the time. So that should be enough here. Oh, for the evaluate method, we're going to need to add the case. So case transfer function dot linear. We're going to return linear input. Um, and then case. Uh, sorry, transfer function dot linear. Then we're going to return linear derivative. Oops, some typo. Linear. Return linear derivative of input. Okay. So that should be enough to make the linear uh, thing work. So let's go ahead and collapse that. Okay, so let's go back to our program here and test it. Um, first thing, let's make this output linear uh, so we can actually get a scaled output. Um, just for giggles, let's change the input to one and let's say we want the output to be uh, two and a half. Okay, totally arbitrary. Um, but clearly outside the range of the sigmoid, uh, but hopefully we can get it. So let's hit F5, and there we go. Um, originally 1.5, um, accelerated quickly, got to 2.5. Not a problem. All right, I'll bet that's pretty much on the money. So that was pretty easy. Um, what other kind of functions can we use? Oh, so here let me uh, pull something up for you. Um, so just to refresh you guys' memory, the sigmoid of x uh, is 1 over 1 plus e to the negative x, like 
that. And let's go ahead and look at a plot of this real quick. Sigma of x um, as x goes from, let's say, negative 5 to 5. Okay. So it looks like this, right? Here's out at negative 5, asymptotically approaching 0. As it goes positive, asymptotically approaching 1. So it's bounded between 0 and 1. Um, but is monotonic increasing? Um, it, it will never, it'll never go back down. It'll never do anything different. Um, and this is, you know, perhaps limiting. So we obviously just added the linear function, which lets us scale stuff nicely. Um, but let's add a couple more. So let's add. Uh, how do I collapse this? There we go. Okay, so let's add a Gaussian function. So what does a Gaussian look like? Um, the Gaussian that we are going to use, uh, let's call it g of x. Let's define that to be um, e to the negative x squared. Okay, so e to the negative x squared. Okay, let's look at a plot of that. Uh, g of x as x goes from negative 5 to 5. And here we are. So this looks kind of like the normal distribution, right, which you would expect, uh, e to the negative x squared. Um, it is similarly always positive, but instead of being monotonic, it is now bell-shaped, perfectly symmetrical. Um, in its unshifted state, it's, it's even. So uh, one thing we can do while we're here in Mathematica is we can go ahead and compute the derivative without having to do it longhand. So let's look at derivative of g of x with respect to x. Okay, so negative 2 e to the negative x squared times x. I kind of dislike the way Mathematica ordered this, uh, really because g of x is e to the negative x squared. This is negative 2x times e to the negative x squared. Okay, so just to compare them, let's go ahead and plot g of x next to its derivative, right? We should see it go increasing, 0, decreasing, back towards 0. Um, and let's just do it like this. So negative 2 times x times g of x. Okay, let's plot those together. Now, in this uh, picture here, you'll see the red line is the derivative, right? Goes positive, right? Comes back negative. So I've certainly convinced, and I certainly hope Mathematica can get it right. Um, so Gaussian is another common uh, transfer function. We'll go ahead and insert that. So let's go back to our project, go back to the neural network, transfer functions. Let's add one called Gaussian. Okay. Go to our static class. Let's go add the method here. Private static double Gaussian. Uh, with the double input, sorry, x. And this is going to return um, math.exp, that's our e. And then to do the power, what I want is math.pow of whatever the input x to the second power. Okay. Now I want to do e to the negative x squared, so we'll drop our negative right there, and that's that. Now, um, similar to the sigmoid, right, because it's exponential, uh, the derivative is actually related to its original uh, itself, right, it's negative 2x times Gaussian. So similar to the way we did sigmoid, we can just define the derivative in terms of the original function. So let's go ahead and do that just to be efficient. Double Gaussian derivative of double x is going to be negative 2.0 times, I'm sorry, yes, negative 2 times uh, x times Gaussian of x. Okay, and then all we have to do, just like last time, is go up here and link them together. Case transfer function dot Gaussian. We're going to return the Gaussian of the input. And for the derivative case transfer function dot Gaussian, let's return Gaussian derivative of the input. All right, just like that. OK, 
Okay, then we'll go back to our program here and we will change the sigmoid to a Gaussian uh, just because I want to keep this um, full range output here at two and a half. So I'll leave the linear in the end, Gaussian in my hidden layer, and of course none for the input. So let's go ahead and run that. And there it is, right? Original output was 0.2, uh, error was huge, and then within 100 iterations we were very, very close. All right, excellent. And finally, so one of the things I mentioned before was that um, computationally speaking, the exponential functions can be uh, expensive when you're doing it lots and lots, which you could conceivably be doing uh, with a large, uh, large network. Um, so if we could do something that was similar in shape, perhaps to the sigmoid, um, had sort of the step qualities, but was not exponentially based, um, that would be great. And it turns out we can. Uh, one that uh, it doesn't have a name per se uh, that I found good is a rational expression. So let's go back to our network. Um, it is similar in shape to the sigmoid, so let's just call it rational sigmoid. I don't know what else to call it. Okay, um, and let's go back real quick to Mathematica and look at what it looks like. So I'll call this R of X. Um, R of X is going to be defined like so, and I won't really get into um, all of it, right? If, if you're taking pre-calc, I'm sure you can figure out why it looks like how it looks. Um, but here's the definition. So it's going to be X over one plus the square root of one plus X squared. Okay, so that's r of x. Now let's look at a plot of r of x as x goes from negative five to five. And here we are. Um, it's not, actually let's bump this up to like 10, let's say. Maybe we can get a little bit more. Here you go. So this turns out, right, if you just look at the limit, this goes to one, uh, right, this takes off. And uh, this is asymptotic at one, just like the sigmoid as you go off to positive infinity, but this function is actually odd, um, right, which should be obvious, and goes off to negative one as you go to negative infinity. So this is like the sigmoid, except we have both positive and negative values, uh, but we do retain that step-like quality, which we uh, kind of want. And of course, I don't want to do this by hand. Uh, sorry, compute the derivative. So let's just do it in here. So bam, there it is. <laughs> um, now x over one plus square root of one plus x squared is gonna appear there, right? Uh, and I think if you factor this, you can get it one more way. Okay, so in fact this uh, one over one plus square root of one plus x squared, that's the actual function. You can, if you're clever about it, you can factor all this garbage out. I go ahead and, and I did all that stuff for you, so. Let's just go add it here. Uh, I guess we can just add it to the case statement. Actually, you know what? I won't until I actually define it. Otherwise, it's going to look dumb. So private static double rational sigmoid of double x is going to be, uh, we're going to return x over quantity 1 plus math dot square root of 1.0 plus x times x for x squared, right? Because I wouldn't want to call pow unless I have to. And private static double rational sigmoid derivative of double of x equals so first, let's just, for simplicity's sake, call double val equal to uh, the square root, math dot square root of one plus x squared, x times x. And then we're gonna say return 1.0 over val times quantity one plus val, okay? And that is the derivative there. Uh, so I'll go test this in the next video, and we'll see you there.